Hello and welcome to my video, Lesson 2.3, per, uh, Permutations when all objects are distinct. So there's a formula that we're going to use here, but let's see if we can kind of figure out where this formula comes from. So let's try to, um, to solve this using our fundamental counting principle. So we're going to, um, well I guess maybe I should read the question. How many different ways can you order the letters in the word perms? which is kind of a short hand way of saying permutations. So perms. So there are, ooh, five letters. I didn't even notice that. Uh, there are five letters. So um, we can go five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. So in this, uh, in this version, it's really easy. We just multiply all of these out. And we get, uh, whoops, another way to write that would be 5 factorial. Um, so 5 factorial. And then let's just uh, plug this in my calculator. So 5 factorial is 120. Okay, so nice and simple. Um, but let's change it up a little bit and say, not just uh, the word perms, but if you only could use three of the letters in the word perms. <clears throat> okay, so what about now? Okay, so we can only use three of the letters. So blank, blank, blank. Now in this example, we can only use three of the letters, but we still have all five letters to choose from. So five choices at first, cross one out, now we have four choices, cross one out, now we have three choices. So four times three times five, so 12 times five, so 60, okay? But you could also just take the previous value, this 120, and divide it by the missing part here, right? So divide by 2 times 1, whoops, and that gives us 60 as well. So, well, how can we write this out more generally? Well, what we can do is we can say that this 5 times 4 times 3 is 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial. All right, so the missing 2 times 1 that's over here. So this equals the 60. Okay, so how can we write this even more generally? So it doesn't just solve this answer, uh, this question, but it solves all. Well, we know n factorial. That's very simple to keep in mind. But how do we get the 2? Well, we take the n and we subtract by the number of choices that we have or the number of spots that we have to choose. So we chose 1, 2, 3 spots. So we call that r. Okay, so uh, and then we take the factorial of that. So in our case, um, if we wrote this a little bit more generally, we'd say 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial, which is the 2 factorial thing. And this is our general equation that we have over here. And there's a restriction there, uh, basically that the bottom of a fraction can't be 0. But uh, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. What's nice about this is that we can actually write this as we can use this little permutation uh, notation right here, where we have the n as the subscript on the bottom left, and the r as the subscript on the bottom right. Okay, so we've learned quite a bit just now, or maybe refreshed from class. Imagine you have two different choices for combination locks, which is more secure? A four uh, rotating disk lock, or the single dial lock with three positions. 
Okay, so um, the first, like if we just talk about this as is, first thing we have to do is make our four discs for the one on the left, or the three positions for the one on the right. And we're going to be multiplying, obviously, this is again our fundamental counting principle to get our answers. So on this one, we have 10 choices, uh, every number from 0 to 10, uh, 0 to 9, sorry. Okay, so we have 10 choices, 10 choices, 10 choices. So we have uh, 10,000 different combinations. Not bad, not bad at all. Um, but here we have 40 combinations, 40, 40, we do that uh, three times and we have one, two, three, and then four times four times four, so 16 times four, so 64. And we have 64,000 possible uh, combinations. Okay, so this is um, obviously one way of just telling which lock is is more secure. Um, but oftentimes these locks, I mean, the one on the right will have no repetition allowed. Uh, the one on the left may also have no repetition allowed. So if that's the case, um, it's probably not quite so likely, but if that's the case, how would we write this? Well, the one on the right probably would never actually have this. Um, so take it with a grain of salt, but the one on the right actually might. So if there's no repetition allowed, every time we choose one, we can't use that number again. So fundamental counting principle, we'd write it like that. On the one on the right, it would be 40, 39, and 38. <clears throat> All right, and uh, I'm just going to uh, write this now as um, as if instead of our fundamental counting principle, I'm going to write it at, with our formula based response. So this would be 10, which is our n, over n, which is our 10, uh, minus the number of choices. So 4. And we take the factorial there. <clears throat> and whatever that value is, is going to be the same as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. You can go ahead and try it out. I don't have my I can't show my calculator on this screen, um, but uh, I will I will do one of the versions and tell you exactly for sure that they are the same. So 40 factorial, uh, sorry, 40 minus 3, and then factorial. I guess there's actually... Are there 40 choices? Yeah, because it starts at zero, yeah. Okay, so let's try to find the answer to all of these. So 10 factorial over 10 minus four factorial. And this gives us 5,040 different versions of uh, the password, I guess. And our next option would be 40 factorial over 40 minus 3 factorial, which is 59,280. So definitely lower than before, but you can see that uh, since we have such a big number, um, getting rid of 3 at the bottom of our fraction doesn't quite change it by as much as when we have a smaller number. Alright, so I hope this video helps you understand how to um, do permutations when all objects are distinct, um, and especially using that formula for um, permutations when it kind of changes, when there's no repetition allowed. So that's when the objects are distinct. So how to use that formula. 
Hope this video helps and good luck.